Hey everybody. Today we're getting started with R Markdown. R Markdown is a great way to communicate the results of your data analysis, particularly to people that might not be R programmers. It incorporates text with simple formatting, as well as the output of R code, and if you like, that R code itself as well. So let's jump right in and start up our first R Markdown document. I'm just going to go up to the new file bit here, go to R Markdown, click on that, pick a title. How about uh, R Markdown Practice? Author, date, and format. So the um, output that I want, I've got some choices here. I'm going to stick with HTML. That's a good flexible format type, and as it says, we can change that later. So once we do that, our studio is going to pull up a template doc for us. And honestly, when you're getting started in R Markdown, I recommend that you just edit this, make the changes that you need um, to, to make it look nice. I'm going to delete this stuff, though, or most of it, because I want to show some stuff that isn't necessarily in there and explain some things slightly different ways. So I left in the first 10 lines or so, and these are all just basically setup things. In particular, at the top, you have what's known as the YAML header. YAML for yet another markdown language. And it's right now just got the stuff that we put in that pop-up window a few minutes ago. The title, the author, and so on. There's other options that we can add there. Um, you'll learn those as you get practice with markdown as you need them. In general, you can more or less leave that the same unless you have some specific needs for your project. I'll talk about this uh, code here from lines 8 to 10 in just a few minutes. First, I want to show just the basic functionality of your R Markdown document, and that is just to do text with simple formatting that will eventually be rendered into an HTML format. So, I don't know. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. This is an R Markdown document. And um, I said you could do simple formatting. Let's see a couple of the most basic things that we can do. We can do um, italics by enclosing what we have, what we want to italicize in single stars. And we can do boldface with two stars. Think about it like single and double emphasis. And um, the other thing I'll show right off the bat, um, we can also include links. So how about we say a link? <laughs> and so I will put the way I want the link to be displayed in my HTML in a bracket. And then in a parenthesis, I will put the actual address. So here I'm going to insert a link to equitable equations. All right, so um, let's actually get the HTML document that this code is going to generate. And I'm going to do that by clicking the knit button. And that'll take just a second. And it's going to create an HTML. And so we're going to have to come up with a name for that. We'll keep the same name here. This is going to be an HTML document instead of the R Markdown document. It exists because I practiced earlier. Yes, I do practice. And there it is. You can see the italics, the bold, and the link. And if I were to click on that, I'd go to Equitable Equations on YouTube. All right. The other thing I want to do before I get to the R code is to put into a head put a heading in here. So how about introduction? Let's knit that and see how that looks. You can see the heading. While I'm at it, let's put in another heading for the next section I'm going to write, which is about R code. Okay, so looking at lines 8 to 10, you can see the basic structure for what we need to put in to include a chunk of R code into our document. Three back ticks, an open brace with the letter R, and then some code followed by three more back ticks. Fortunately, you don't have to type that yourself unless you want to. If you go up to this uh, drop down here with the C, it gives you some options for including different sorts of code. And I'm going to do R, of course, but you've got other options there if you have things like Python installed. And you can see the three back ticks, the brace with the R, some space for code, and then three more back ticks. And now we can do stuff. So uh, let's get some random normal values. Let's get five of those, and then let's print them. Let's just see what happens. All right, you can see we've got a gray box where we see the code, and then a white box where we see the output. Now, 
one thing to be aware of is that when you click knit, R is essentially starting a new session. So if you have something that you've done in the console, for instance, letting X be equal to five, the markdown document isn't gonna know, isn't gonna have access to that information. So for instance, if I ask R to print five in this document, I'm gonna get an error here because that X equals five doesn't exist in the current environment. We're getting a new environment in this session. So just be aware of that, that you're basically starting from scratch in your R Markdown document. Okay, now if you look at this thing that we've knit together, we've got both the code and the output. And there's plenty of circumstances where you might want just one of those things. So for instance, we might not want to actually evaluate the code. We might just wanna show the code. And so up in this um, top part of the gray box, I can put in some options inside that brace where I have the R. So for instance, eval equals false. In other words, show me the code, but don't actually evaluate the code. Um, we can also use the echo option to um, show or not show the code as opposed to the output. And um, we did eval and results to show or not show the output. So those are the three things that I end up using the most in here. Although to be honest, I don't usually type them in myself. RStudio has this little gear here. And if we click on that, you can see it's got options for what we want to output. Do we want to output the code, the, um, the results of the code, both or neither. As long as I'm here, let me point out these sliders right here, in particular for show warnings and show messages. So when you knit your document, by default, our studio, the, um, the markdown document, is gonna include both warnings and messages. And you might not want those in a professional document. For instance, if you're doing a ggplot, you get warnings when rows that are being, um, with values that are supposed to be there are not there. And you might want to suppress that warning and talk about the missing values in the actual text of your of your document. Um, one other thing you might have noticed here on line eight, after the word after R is the word setup, and that's just the, the name of the chunk. So let's name the chunk that I'm working on right now. Our first chunk. And. So that won't actually change what the knitted document looks like. This is just under the hood organization. But if you go down here to the bottom and click on this sort of up and down arrow, you can see you've got an outline with both the headings that you've set up and the chunks. So you can navigate using that. So by clicking on chunk one, it takes me up to line eight. As you get to be, as you get more advanced and you start writing longer and longer markdown documents, that's going to become more and more important. So I encourage you to um, start naming your chunks right away as a best practice. All right, so I already mentioned about the YAML header, but let's take a, a second to just mention this now that we understand a little bit about what's going on with co with the R code and these chunks. I've kept in this um, this first chunk that R Studio gave me with its template document because um, this is where we can set up our options. And there's two things that I usually do here. First of all, is just set up my sort of default. So echo equals true means just by default, unless I say otherwise for the rest of the document, echo out the code, show me the code itself. The other thing I frequently do in this setup chunk is to import any libraries that I might need. So for instance, library tidyverse. I'll put that in there, and I want to do one more as well. Let's do um, Palmer Penguins, which may have functions in it for all I know, but uh, I've never used any of them. I've only ever used the data set Penguins, and I'm going to do something with that in a little bit. Because include equals false, the, all of this code will be evaluated, but not actually used. So a lot of times as I'm making my R Markdown document, I end up coming back to my setup chunk and adding more things like this, just like I did this time. Um, let's see here. More text tools. A few more things that you might want to do in your document. Um, we can do subheadings, like so. Let's just see what that looks like. There it is. Um, I did a heading with one hash, 
a subheading with two hashes. You can also do three, four, or even more sublevels of your headings if you'd like. We can do um, unordered lists. My dog says hi if you can hear him barking. So unordered lists, you just do a dash and then you do the first item, the second item, and so on. And I think I need to hit an enter again there. Knit that just to see what it looks like. There it is, and I missed a space, so that's why that didn't typeset right. Before I hit knit again, let's go ahead and do ordered lists. And that's exactly what you would expect. One, two, etc. So I will knit that one. All right. Another thing that I end up doing from time to time is to insert an image. So um, we can insert an image, yay. Like this. So the way you do it is with an exclamation point because we're excited about it. Please include alt text to explain what it is to someone that's not actually seeing the image. And then in a parenthesis, put the name of the file if it's in the same folder as the document you're working on or a path to the file if it's not. So if you look in my file browser here on the right, you can see I have my Rusty logo, which you'll see in some of my YouTube branding in this current folder. So let's get that in here. Rusty logo dot P and G. And let's knit that and see how it looks. All right, so there it is. It's big, just sort of by default, it takes up the entire space. So maybe I want that. Maybe I don't. There's options I can use to change that. If I put a brace here, a curly brace, I can put width equals, and then I can either put it in absolute terms in quotes, or I think I'll do it in percentage terms. So I'd like the width to be 20% of the page width. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And there it is, much smaller as you would expect. Uh, let's see here, we can add citations. And by citations here, what I really mean is footnotes. And let's take a look at that. There's multiple ways to do citations in R. This is the simplest. You can see I've got a, sub, a superscript on the word citations, and then down here, the actual text that I had in my bracket. It's possible to do a full bibliography using BibTeX if you're familiar with that. I'm not going to do that, at least not right now. I'll save that for another vid. We can use math mode. So this is something where if you know LaTeX, you could do it. So for instance, alpha, beta, etc. That's also not something I want to go into right now. If you know LaTeX, this is really helpful. If you don't know LaTeX, well, this isn't for you just now. The um, last thing I want to mention or that I want to show is we can make nice tables. And there are lots of options to for um, making good tables in R Markdown. I want to show the most basic way of making a decent looking table, and that's using the cabal command. And that's in the knitter package, which I need to library explicitly, although it comes pre-installed, I'm pretty sure. Um, so let's get a new code chunk and use the cabal command to do a basic table for, let's say the first five rows of that Palmer penguins data set. So I don't want to do the whole data set. So let's make penguins small, just the head of penguins there, like so. And then let's get a table of it. So cabal penguins. And let's just knit that. And I didn't want to do penguins. Of course, I wanted to do penguins small. So we'll actually re-knit that. There we go. That's a little better looking. So that we can see the first five rows of the penguins data set. All right, so that should be enough to get you started on R Markdown, writing good documents to share with your collaborators or with the people you're reporting to. I do want to point out as I wrap up, if you go to the help menu here and then to cheat sheets, 
there's two really helpful links. There's the R Markdown Cheat Sheet and the R Markdown Reference Guide. And those are useful just in they quickly run through some of your basic um, commands for text formatting, like italics, bold, and links, and some of the basic options that you can have both for your chunks and for the YAML itself. So hopefully that's enough to get you started on R Markdown.